We start the venerable learning of Chakli Yisrael, Parshas Tetzava, Yom Chamishi, Day 5. We're talking about the Chayshin, the breastplate worn by the Kain Gadol, Vartura Ravi, the fourth row of the Chayshin, has Tarshish, the Topaz, Vishayam, the Onyx, Vyoshpe, and the Jasper. Yoshpe, by the way, is the stone of Binyamin. And it just has the most magnificent lesson. Yoshpe is a corruption of Yesh Peh. That Binyamin had a mouth. He knew about the sale of Yosef. And he didn't divulge it to his father for 22 years. He kept the secret for 22 years. He was afraid that it could result in the brothers getting cursed. And therefore he kept the secret for 22 years. And we know that Binyamin, of course, was the most incredible person. He was one of the few people in the history of mankind that never sinned. He only died, the Gemara tells us in Baba Basia, because of the curse of the sin of Adam and Chava. And it's why, because his mouth was so pure, that the Beis Hamikdash was built on his property. Because the Beis Hamikdash, its mission statement is peace, and one who has such control over his mouth is a master of peace. So the Torah of E, the fourth row, was Tarshish, Mishayim, Miyashbe. Its stones were Topaz, Onyx, and Jasper. Mishubotzim, Zov, Yiyu. There are settings of gold that these stones went in Bimilu Aisam. And the settings were deep to surround the thickness of the stone. And the thickness of the stone filled the setting. The Sidra Riviyah, Krub Yama Uvurla, Ufantere Meramtsam Didahav Yohain, Vashla Mushain. Says Rashi, as I explained to you, Mishabatsim Zav, with sockets of gold, Yiwaturim Bimiliosam. These rows, when they were, f- when they were filled with the stones, mukhafin, were surrounded by mishpitzay zav sockets of gold. Ba'aymek shir, the depth of the socket was the amount she is malay ba'ovei ha'even, and it will be filled with the thickness of the stone. Zel lashon b'mili asam that it filled them kishir milui avyon shalavadim. The amount of the fullness of the thickness of the stone, yia oime kamishpatzai, that was the depth of the socket, like pachis, not less, below yoiser, and not more. Vavanim in the stones, tiena al shmois bene Yisrael, the stones would be on the names, with the names of the bene Yisrael, shteim esrei 12 al shmoisam, with their names, pituchei choisam, engraved like with a signet ring, Ish al Shmai, every man with his name, Tiyeda, it will be Lishne Asr Shavit for the twelve tribes. Vabnaya Yehevyon al Shmas Bnei Yisrael Tarte Esri al Shmo Hasan, Ksav Mefurish, Kiglof de Iska, Gvar al Shmei, Tehevyon Lisrain Asar Shifted. Now here Rashi will tell us that unlike on the shoulder straps of the aphone, on the annex stones, on the shoulder straps of the aphone, where the names of the Shvatim were written according to the chronological order of how they were born. Here they were done in the order of the different wives. So at first it had the six sons of Leah, then it had the two sons of Bila, uh, excuse me, the two sons of Zilpa, the two sons of Zilpa, um, which was done in Aftali. Then the two sons of Bila, God and Asher. And finally, uh, and, and, and excuse me, again I said it wrong. The two sons of Don and Aftali from Bila, which were next after Leah's six sons. Then God and Asher from Zilpa, And finally Yosef and Yaman from Rachel. So that we'll see that in Rashi. Ish al Shmai, Kiseder told the way they were done according to their families. Seder Avadim, that was the order of the Avadim, the Oidim 
the 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 red stone, the Ruvain pitted al Shimon Vikain Kula. Says the Pasik, Vasisa Alachoshin, and you will make to attach to the breastplate Shaushois Gavlois chains that came from the edge. Maisa Avois, these chains were braided of Zovtar, of pure gold. We will see that these chains were attached to the uh, connection in the shoulder straps of the ephod that hung down over the shoulders of the Kohen Gadol. Mesabed al Chushna Tikin Mesachmon Ovad Gidilu Dehav Dechei, says Rashi. Alachoshin, now, Alachoshin means Bishvil for the breastplate. Likovam Betaba Osav, to attach them to the rings that were attached to the breastplate. Kamoshe Mephorish Lamata Banyan, as the Pasuk will explain below. Shaushais, what is the etymology of the word Shaushais? Shaushais is like the roots of a tree. Lashain Shrashe Elon. Now the roots of the tree hold the tree to the ground. Hamachiz in le'ilan that sees the tree lehe ochez to grab it uli tokeya and to attach it ba'aretz. Af elu so these chains yul ma'achiz in le'choshin it will hold on to the choshin she bahem yiyatoli like I told you it's suspended ba'efoid onto the shoulder straps of the efoid. These are the two chains, which are stated above, when we talked about the sockets, the sockets that are attached to the shoulder straps of the ephod. Now, similarly, the great grammarian, grammarian, Menachem ben Sorek, the Af Shaushirais, Posa Menachem ben Sorek, Loshin Shroshim. He explains it, that it means roots. But he says an interesting thing. Va'amar she'horesh, that it, when it says shav shirois, you don't need the second resh, because shroshim doesn't have two reshes. So va'amar she'horesh yaseira. The resh is extra, the second resh of shav shirois is extra, like the mem in the word shilsham, which really should be shalosh, or mem shebereikam, which could be reik, which is also empty. So there are extra letters. Rashi says, I don't, I don't agree with him. Elashasheres, with the two reishes, belosh and ivris is similar to kishalsheles, chains, which is also has two lamids, Belosh and Mishnah. And I think what Rashi is not elaborating, you know, Rashi tells us only pieces of information, I think that links, such as chains, are made up of multiple links. So that's the double Loshin in Shar Shirois, Shin Reish, Shin Reish, like Shal Shelis, Shin Lamid, Shin Lamid, that indicates links. Gavlus means on the edge, like the Lushan Gvul, a border. Hu Migbalois, that's the Lushan of Migbalois, the edge, Ha'omala Maila. Shetiska Aim Bitabois, because the chains are attached to rings, Shiyu Bigvula Khoshin, which is on the edge of the Khoshin. The Chol Gvul, and always when it says border, Lushan Katza, it's, it's talking about the end. The end of the country is its border, which is Ashamil Balaz. Maisa avos. What does it mean avos? Maisa clear. It means it's braided. Now it says the pasuk for asisa ala chayshin, and you should make on the chayshin shtei tabayis zav, two rings of gold. V'nasata es shtei atabayis, and you put the two rings al shnei ktsayis a chayshin at the two ends of the chayshin because the chains will be attached to those these two rings. V'sabed al kushna. Tartin iskin the dav is sitting yos tartin is kos I'll train sitre choshna says Rashi ala choshin litzayre choshin now here it means that it's ala means for the use of the choshin kedei lekavam by 
in order to attach the chains to these rings. Don't think it means that the, the, the rings were, came out of the Choshen and were made together with it. Says Rashi, that's not pshat. Don't think that it was made from the same body of the Choshen. Shim came out What is it that it says afterwards on the Satesh day after voice that you put the two rings onto the Khoshin? If it was made with the Khoshin, Baloy Kvarna Sunamba. It should have said in the beginning of the Pasuk, should make at the end of the Khoshin two rings of gold. The Apishash Rice, so also with the chains, Sarak Atta Liftar. Came. You have to also interpret it that afterwards you attach the chains to the rings. Al the two edges of the chayshin, the two corners, shekeneged that uh, uh, is opposite the neck, the right side of the chayshin and the left side of the chayshin, that parallel the edges of the shoulder straps that come down on either side, to the right and to the left. And you take these two uh, braided chains, and connect them to the two rings, at the edge of the chayshin. Says Rashi, these are the chains that are braided. It doesn't say where they're fixed. It doesn't say that they're attached to rings. That you should uh, attach them on the rings. And you should know, don't think that there's another set of chains. Because in Pashas Pekude, it only says, when it repeats it again, in Pashas Pekude, it only says one set of chains. It's the same chains that I mentioned earlier. When it repeats it, it doesn't say anything about two sets of chains. And now, we continue with Cheskel, where the Navi says Hashem again uh, gives him a view of the future Beis HaMikdash. Now Hashem brought me through the northern gate. El Pnei is facing the house. The era, and I saw Hashem as base Hashem. The honor of Hashem filled the base Hashem. The apple upon him, and I fell upon my face in 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 worship to Hashem. The Yemei Hashem, and Hashem said to me, Ben Adam, Sim Limcha, uh, train your heart. Or Avon Bainecha and see with your eyes above his necha shma and hear with your ears. It's Kalasha Nimidabaroy Sak. Listen carefully and concentrate. Lakol Khukai Space Hashem to all the statutes of the house of Hashem Lakol Soy Raisov and all of its instructions. The Samta Libcha and set your heart, Limavoya Bayas, to the entrance of the house, and Bakom Motsaya Migdash and all the exits of the temple. And you should tell El Meri to those that rebel, El Beis Yisrael, to the house of Israel. So says Hashem Lakim, Rav Lachem, it's enough you, Mikolto of Eisechem Beis Yisrael, all the abominations that you did. And here Hashem describes the abominations that the Yidden let Jews that worshipped idols serve in the Beis Amikdash. And they let Jews who were uncircumcised, now they were uncircumcised because their brothers died, they were hemophiliacs, so they're allowed to be uncircumcised. But they're not allowed to do the Avoid in the base of English. They let, they let them do this. Ba'aviachem b'nei necher, you allowed. B'nei necher here doesn't mean goyim. It means people that were in the snakru, that became estranged from Hashem. Arle lave with uncircumcised hearts, they worshiped idolatry. The Arle Basar, or those of uncircumcised flesh, because their brothers died from circumcision. They're allowed not to be circumcised, but they're not allowed to serve in the base of English. Liyois and you allowed them to serve in the temple. 
to desecrate my house. When they offered my uh, meal offerings and the fats, like the lobe of the liver, the kidneys, the, 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 the fats, the dumb and the blood, they annulled my covenant from doing these abominations. They didn't heed the guardianship of my holy place. And they placed those that were supposed to guard my guardianship, my people that they chose, which is not allowed. Remember, sinning in the house of Hashem is much worse. The same way the Ramban says that Stoim Vamira was punished more severely because it happened in Eretz Yisrael. And that's why sins like talking in shul are so severe. Because you're talking in shul, which is a mikdash ma'at. Talking in the, in, in the palace of Hashem is much more severe a crime than doing a crime outside of the mikdash ma'at. And now, the powerful advice of Shlomo Melech, I already made a bracha, Lev Navin, an understanding heart, Yikne Das, acquires knowledge. Now, this is a very important thing. You know, there are people that even when they m meet great people, they spend their time talking to the great people to impress them. But an understanding heart says, what am I doing? Yikne Das, let me acquire knowledge. What am I busy talking? V'ayzen Chachamim. And the ear of a wise person to vakesh das is hungry to learn knowledge. Matan adam yarchivloi. When a person gives gifts, he's a charitable person. Yarchivloi, it will widen his oilam abba. Vilifne gedoilim yanchenu. And he sets himself to be appreciated by the great people of his generation. The great people of his generation appreciate people that are philanthropic. The way it is, is that when two people come in front of the judge, when the first person offers his claim, it sounds very persuasive and convincing, because that's all the judge hears. But he has to know that he has to wait and know that the other litigant is going to come and analyze and show the flaws and the holes in the other person's argument. So you shouldn't be convinced by what the first one says. Midyonim fights yash bishagayro can be stopped by doing a lottery. If people are arguing over the division of something and they can't come to a conclusion, then Shlomo HaMelech says a lot of times a lottery is the way to go and leave it up to Hashem to decide how to divide it. Uvein atsumim yafrid. And people who have mighty disagreements, this can cause a separation from the conflict by leaving it up to a lottery. However, now this is a very sorry pasuk. You know, there is a lot of sibling rivalry. There is, it is a normal thing as the Gemara says in several places, Achim Hamizgorim Zemzeh, brothers that contend with one another. Now says Shleim Melech, Och Nifsha, a rebellious brother, Mikirias Oiz, and gets separated from a mighty city. So Rashi tells us this is referring, for example, to Avram and Light. Light was rebellious until the point where he lost out and he was separated from Avram. If Light would have stayed with Avram, he never would have been in Sedaim. His wife wouldn't have died. His unmarried daughter wouldn't have been coated with honey and stung to death. He wouldn't have lost his married daughters with his grandchildren. But a rebellious brother... Mikirius Oz gets separated from a strong city. Rashi says this refers also to Yaakov and Esav. Esav 
separating himself with Yaakov, if he would have been able to stay with Yaakov, he would have benefited greatly. And the Pasuk says, Midyanim, when they quarrel, unfortunately, a lot of times, it's Kibriach Amin. It's like the bolts of a palace. Their quarrel remains fixed and cemented. And it's strong like the bolts of a palace. And now our adventure for today is the sixth parak of Menachus. Menachus are meal offerings, and there's different types of meal offerings. There are meal offerings of fine flour. There's meal offerings made on a machavas, on a griddle, like a pancake. There's a meal offering that's made with the marcheshes, that's deep fried. There are chalas, there are loaves baked in the oven, and then there are rikikin, there are wafers. We're going to see that we're going to learn that there's some menachas that you take a kmitza, the kain takes a handful with the three fingers, scoops it up, levels it out with the thumb and the pinky. That's offered on the mizbeach, and the rest of the mincha is eaten by the kain. Only male kahanim, it's kache kachim. But then there's menachas that go entirely on the altar. A minchas kayen, for example, or a mincha of a libation, goes entirely on the altar. We're going to see in this parak uh, that we have to sift the flour many, many times. We're going to see that we beat the wheat, we rub it many, many times, or we beat the dough and rub it many, many times. So we're going to talk about the oil placement, oil is put into the mincha. We're going to talk about how the mincha is broken up into pieces. So let's get to it. Elu menachos, nikmosos. These meal offerings, we take a kmitza, that's put on the mizbech, ushyoreyen la kahanim, and the remainder is eaten by the kahanim. Mincha soilus, the mincha fine flour, vamachvis, the mincha prepared on the griddle, vamacheshes, that which is deep fried, vachalus, the loaves baked in the oven, varakikin, and the wafers. Minchas goyim, a mincha that's offered by Gentiles, minchas noshim, a mincha that's offered by women, minchas ha'oimah, the minchas ha'oimah which is brought on the 16th of Nisan to permit the new crop, minchas chaytay, the mincha of a sinner, or minchas knois, and the mincha of a saita, the suspected adulterous woman. Rab Shimon Aimer minchas chaytei shel kahanim. Now this is a big chiddush of Rab Shimon. Remember we said the mincha of a kain is totally burnt. But the minchas chaytei of a kain, nikmatzis, since it's a minchas chaytei, you have to take a kmitza. But unlike a regular situation where the remainder is eaten, both the kmitza and the remainder goes on the mizbeach, Vakoimets korav laatzme, the koimets is offered on the mizbech. Vashirayim kraven laatzme, and the remainder is offered by itself. Now we're going to learn the menachas that don't have a kmitza. Minchas kahanim, the mincha of a koyin, or minchas koyin mashiach. This is the mincha of the koyin gadol that's offered half in the morning and half in the afternoon every day. Or minchas nesachim, the mincha that accompanies libations. La mizbeach that goes totally up on the altar. Ve'ain ba'em lekahanim. The kahanim don't get any portion. In this case of these menachas, the mizbeach has the upper hand over the kahanim. The two loaves of shvuas that accompany the kifzei atzeres, the lambs of shvuas, and the lechem upon the twelve showbread that's offered from one week to the next, those are completely eaten by the kahanim. None of it goes on the mizbech, and in this case, in this, the kahanim has the upper hand over the mizbech. All menachas that are made in a ut- in clay shores, there are three placements of oil. First, they put the oil into the clay shores before they put in the flour. Then they put in the flour, uvalila, and they mix the flour with the oil. Umatan shemen bakeli, and then they put the oil in again, kaidem las yasim. 
before their preparation. Vachalos, chalos, here, loaves, um, they're, they're, not, they're not all in the clay shares because the loaves are baked in the oven, and the oven is earthenware, it's not a clay shares. So here, they only make two placements of oil. The chalos boilerline. First they put the oil in the empty keli, then they put in the flour, and then they mix it with oil. Divir HaMeyer, Rebbe. The Chacham HaMaymim, and the Chacham say, excuse me, uh, the Rebbe holds that they add the second time the oil after they baked into chalas. The Chacham HaMaymim say this. The Chacham say that the second time it's, they put the oil in before they put the flour, then they put in the flour, and then they add oil, oil again when they mix it before they bake it. Ha'chalas um, t'unais blila. The chalas, the oil gets mixed with it. Varekikim, but the wafer is meshuchin. They smear the oil on the wafer out afterwards. Ketzad meshuchin. How do they smear it on the wafer? Kimin ki. Like the twelfth letter of the Greek language, which is called ki, which is like a U. Now, since that's not using a lot of the oil, so by the Rikikim there's leftover oil. What do they do with the leftover oil? Ushar Hashem and the rest of the oil, Nechel is eaten by the Khan. Kola Menachas Anasas Bekli, all the Menachas that are made in the Keli, to Unais Pesisa, they have to be broken. Minchas Yisrael, the Minchas Yisrael, which we take a kmitza from, Kaifel Echad Lishnaim, you fold it first one time, and then Ushnaim Larba, then you fold the two into four. Omavdal, and it's separated, so you should be able to take a, a kmitza. Minchas Kahanim, the Minchas Kahanim, which there's no kmitza, it goes entirely on the Mizbeach. Kaifel Echad Lishnaim, we fold it one into two, and then Ushnaim Larba, two into four, but we don't have to divide it. Because we don't have to take a kmitza. Minchas Kayin HaMashiach, the Minchah of the Kayin Gadol, which is often half in the morning and half in the afternoon, they didn't fold it twice and then another time, they only folded it once. Reb Shimon, Reb Shimon says, Minchas Kahanim, Minchas Kayin Mashiach, the Minchah of the Kahanim, which there's no kmitza, and Minchas Kayin Mashiach, where there's no kmitza, Eimba we don't break it up at all. Mipnei Sheimba and Kmitza, because we don't have to take from it a handful. Vikol Sheimba and Kmitza, if you don't take a handful, Eimba Msisa, we don't have to break it up. And Reb Shimon says, by the Yisrael, where we do break it up, we don't fold it only one time and then again folding it, but we fold it until we make pieces the size of a kezayis. The chulon kezayisim. Until we make pieces all the size of an olive. Now this is remarkable. Shows you what an avoid of the mincha is. The meal offering is in, in the base of Migdash. You know the mincha is the cheapest thing. If you could afford more you bring a bird offering. If you could afford more you bring an animal. So you'll say a meal offering. <laughs> But listen to the avoid that it goes into this. Kala menachis to unay shalish mea shifa when we bring the wheat in order to remo- remove the chaff we rub it 300 times uh, against the keli and the chamesh mea shifa and we pound it 500 times to really get rid of all the chaff. The shifa ba'bita and the Gemara explain the mission explains the, the rubbing and the pounding is bachitim, is with the wheat in order to remove the chaff. Rabbi Yaisi disagrees. Rabbi Yaisi, I mean, we, the Rav takes out the word af. Rabbi Yaisi, I mean, No, it's talking about we rub and we pound the dough in order that it should be very smooth. Kala menachis boys eser eser. All menachis are brought in ten pieces. We make ten pieces. Chutz malachim aponim which we know we make 12 loaves, the chavite kain gadol, and the offering, the daily offering of the kain gadol, shein boi shteim esrei, there we make 12 loaves, dibber ab yud, rameir ayme kulon boi shteim esrei, they all come 12, 
chutz mechalas ha-toida v'aniziris, except for the 40 loaves of the toida and the 20 loaves that accompany the ayel of the nazir, shein bois eser eser, there of each type, it comes 10 loaves each and not 12. Now, the Eimer, which was brought in the 16th of Nisan to permit the crop, and it was made out of barley, fresh barley has a lot of chaff to remove. So Ha'imer Ha'yabo Isarayin Mishalosh Sin. They would separate, they would bring three sa, three sa is ten Isarayin, ten tenths, and from that they would separate and sift till they got a pure Isarayin. Shtalechem, the Shtalechem, which is from wheat, wheat doesn't have so much chaff. Shnei Esrayin Mishalosh Sin. They were able to get two perfect Esrayinim from three sa, from ten isar. Lechem upon him that comes from old wheat, which has less chaff. Esrim rabba Esrayinim, there they separated 24 Esrayinim, may Esrim rabba sin. They were able to get one isar from each sa. Now, in sifting it, this is amazing, in sifting it, they sifted it with 13 sieves, one on top of another, each one with smaller holes. It was a whole system to sift it out. The Shtealechem, they sifted with 12 sieves, with 11. Reb Shimon, I mean, Reb Shimon says, kitzvah. there wasn't a set amount. They didn't have to use three saw. And they didn't have to use so many sieves. The main thing is, is that they had to sift it until there was no, no chaff. Elisailis menufa kot yamevi. They bought flour that was sifted all of its needs. Shinem of a you should take fine flour, va'afisa and bake it. Achetain menufa kol You have to make sure that it's sifted enough. But there wasn't a fixed amount. You could use less sieves, you could use more sieves, you could use uh, more grain or less grain, as long as the sum total is completely sifted. And now we learn the Gemara in Menachis, in Menachis, uh, Rav and Shmuel, Rav and Shmuel, the Imre Travayu, who both say, Bizman Shebeis HaMikdash Kayim, Oimer Mater. As soon as you brought the Minchas uh, Oimer on the 16th of Nisan, that permitted the new crop to be used. Bizman Sheein Beis HaMikdash Kayim, when there's no Beis HaMikdash, when does the new crop become permitted? Heya Mizrach Mater. Then the morning of the 16th, as soon as it's uh, sunrise, it's permitted. My timer, Trey Kroy Ksive. There's actually two psukim. Ksiv ad Haviachem, until you bring it. Or Ksiv ad Etzim Ayoyim until the very day. Okay, Tzad. Kam bezman shebeis amigdash kaim, so the bringing of the Aymer permits the new crop. Kam bezman shein beis amigdash kaim, when the beis amigdash is not around, then until the morning. Even during the days of the Beis HaMikdash, as soon as the morning came, it was permitted to eat the new crop. Until it's brought, that's the mitzvah. That's an extra mitzvah to wait until it's brought. But, if you eat it, you're not over the love of eating the new crop once the morning comes. Says the Gemara, but it says, It says only when you bring the Aymer, that implies until then it's not permitted. He says that's not the mitzvah, that's for the extra mitzvah. Ay, it says, the Aymer permits the new crop in the provinces. And the Shtei allows them to use the new crop for offerings in the Migdash. Again, it doesn't mean that before the, bringing the Aymer it's, it's Aser. It means the Mitzvah is an extra Mitzvah to wait until it's brought. Now, Mishachara Beis HaMikdash, when the Temple was destroyed because of our sins, 
Hiskin Rabbi Yechonim Ben Zakai, Rabbi Yechonim Ben Zakai enacted, she yehe yoyim honeif kulei aser, that the day of waving, that's the day of the 16th, when they would wave it, is completely aser. Why? My timer. Because if we would allow people to eat it right away at sunrise, we're afraid that maybe the Mashiach will come and people will say, last year we ate at sunrise, this year we'll also eat at sunrise. And they won't realize that last year they ate it because there was no base of Migdash. But now you have to wait until the Aymer is offered. My time, Meheri Yabana base of Migdash. The base of Migdash should be built speedily. It's Hashem. The Yaimru, and people will say, Eshtaket, last year, Milo Yachal Nubei or Mizrach, didn't we eat it at sunrise? Hashtanami Nechot, we should eat it now at sunrise. Velo Yodem, they won't realize that Eshtaket, Lo Yavi Aymer, there was no Aymer. So there, Hey, Mizrach Mate, there the sun permitted it. But for Hashtanika Aymer, Aymer Mate. So you can't eat it before then. So therefore, since people shouldn't make a mistake, they made it every year. That's also until nightfall. Says the Gemara, but if you'll say that really, if you eat it before the Omer, it's not a lav, and it's only that we wait for a mitzvah, would we make such a takon because of an extra mitzvah? Misha mitzvah, lekem veligzer, we should make a gezeira that people shouldn't eat it at sunrise? Amar Rav Nachbar Yitzchak, no. Rabbi Yechim and Zakeh made it awesome until nightfall because he holds Bishitis Rabbi Huda Amr. He says, the Amr Menatayra Asr. It's forbidden Menatayra. Shenema at Etzem Ayayim Hazeh. When there's no base of English, it's Asr at Etzem Ayayim Hazeh until the 16th. And he holds Ad Va'ad Bechlam. So it includes the 16th day also. And that's why it's not f- permitted until the end of the seventh, 16th day, which is the night of the 17th. Shenema ad etzem ayoyim hazeh, ad itzub ayishol yoyim, until the 16th, so it includes the 16th too. And that's why it's also until nightfall. And now the plot thickens. What about in the diaspora? In the diaspora, we don't know. We have a sveik of the yoyimah. That's why we keep two days of Yom Tov. So Rav Papa, Rav Hunabred, Rav Shua, Achlei Chodesh, they would eat Chodesh, but to the Shiftzer, Nagei Shiftzer. The night of the 16th, going into the 17th. Why? Because Kesavrei Chodesh, B'chutzel Aretz, Durabonon. They held that Chodesh is also in Chutzel Aretz, only Durabonon. And therefore, V'lesveik Alei Chayshinon. Therefore, they're not worried about the 17th day because the 17th day is only a suffolk. And since in Chutz it's, it's Chodesh is only the Rabbanan, so a suffolk the Rabbanan Lakula. The Rabbanan Debe Ravashi Achle Besafra de Shifsa. They ate in the morning of the 17th. Why? Because Savre Chodesh be Chutz Laaretz de Raisa. They hold that Chodesh in Chutz Laaretz is de Raisa. So therefore, they're worried about the 17th. But they hold that Rabbi Yechim and Zakai, Midr Rabbanan Kamer. Rabbi Yechim and Zakai said it's only us until night, Midr Rabbanan, because of the fact that people might say that, uh, that if it's, uh, they, they won't know that now when the Eimer is brought, they have to wait. So therefore, he asked it the whole day. But that which he asked it the whole day is only the Rabbanan, so they don't say that it's also on the 17th. The Chitik and the Yaim Hanuf, he only made the day itself uh, 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 because of the fact that they might not realize that on this day you have to wait for the bringing of the Aymer. But he didn't make the Takana for the 17th, which is only a Sveik of the Aymer, it's only the Rabbana. Amar Ravina, Ravina said, Amrali Aim. My foster mother told me, <laughs> it could be his actual mother in this case, Amrli Ain, my mother told me, Avuch lo yava ochel chadash, your father didn't eat chadash, ala ba'urta de shifts and nugget He wouldn't eat the new crap in the diaspora 
until the end of the 17th day. Why? Because he held the Isser is ad etzema yom ezev, ad va'ad bechlal, is a deraisa, that the whole day is awesome. And since it's a deraisa, uh, the Savalak Reb Yehuda, he holds that it's an Isser deraisa, and since he holds it's an Isser deraisa, v'chayish l'sveika, therefore he's chayish for the sveika de yuma, and therefore he didn't eat the, the new crap until the end of the second, until the end of the 17th, uh, going into the 18th. And now, we learn a very interesting Zayar. The Zayar discusses a question. We know, the Gemara says that Chomets represents the Yetzahara. It's called the Seir Shebe Isa, the yeast of the dough. And the reason why it represents the Yetzahara is just like uh, leaven, yeast, or sourdough, to be more accurate, agitates the dough, so also the Yetzirah agitates us. And therefore, on Pesach, we stay away from Chavetz, Kol Machmetz, The question is why, on Shavuos, which is the holy day of the giving of Tyra, why then is the Shtei Alechem, the two loaves, made out of Chometz? Then we should be even more pure, and we should stay away th- with that from that which represents the Eight Sahara. So now, the Gemara, now the Gemara, uh, the Zayar, analyzes this. So the Zayar starts off. Train name ochlu Yisrael. Two types of bread were eaten by Klal Yisrael. We know when we came out of Mitzrayim, we had matzah, and it lasted miraculously for 30 days. So train name ochlu Yisrael. Chad kad nofku mi When we left Egypt, ochlu matzah lechemoini. We ate the matzah, the poor man's bread. The Chad B'madbara, and then later on when we were, we were elevated, and we ate Lechem in Hashemayim. We ate bread from heaven, Lechem Abirim, the bread of angels. I will rain down to you, from you bread from heaven. Valda, Karbono de Yuma Da, the carbon of Shvuas, Namahi. Val Nama, and together with the bread, iskarivu kol shor karbonin, the different, the kifse atzeres, and the different lambs were offered up. The namo iu iker, the bread is the essence, the chsivik kraftem ala lechem, together with the bread, shivas ksafim, seven lambs. So you see that the bread is the focal point. O ksiv mi moishvaisechem from your habitats, Taviu lechem tnufa, the bread of waving. Dohi namo da'akimu be Yisrael. This is the bread that Klal Yisrael became wise with. Chachmosi ilor da'araisa, the elevated uh, wisdom uh, of the Torah. The aluba urcha, and uh, they elevated themselves in the ways of the Torah. So now the question is. Says the Zaira, Hashta Islan Listakla. We should really analyze this. But Pesach Nofki Yisrael, on Pesach, Klal Yisrael escaped. Minama the Iskre Chavetz. We were steeped in idolatry. And uh, it says, Halalo Oiv Devay Dezav, Halalo Oiv Devay Dezav. We were steeped in idolatry. And we escaped from the bread. Which is called chametz. Ksiv lo yera lecha chametz. You shouldn't see any bread. Uksiv ki kol oichel machmes. That's whoever eats bread. Benichrasa, my time. Begin yikara dahu nama de iskere matzah, and therefore we had the precious. Um, why are we also in chametz? Begin Yakara Daunama this guy because of the covet of the Tzad Kedusha, which is called Matzah, which is free from the 
agitation of the Yetzirah. Also, we say that the lowly matzah looks up to the, to the puffed up chametz and says, what are you so puffed up about? We have the same ingredients. So chametz also represents arrogance. Hashta de zechu Yisrael l'nama ilo yater. Now that Klau Yisrael merited in the, in, the, in the midbar to have even more elevated bread, the mud, the lechem abirim, lo ye'oz haval is batla chametz. Wouldn't it be proper that we should get rid of the chametz entirely? V'lo ye'schazek klau, we shouldn't see it at all. And to the contrary, we make the focal point of the carbon of Shmuel a leavened carbon. Why is this carbon chametz? Flour, it should be made leavened. You know, in general, it's very rare to have chametz on the Mizbeach. It says you're not supposed to have any chametz or any devash on the Mizbeach normally. So this is a very big exception. The suit, the hash to be yoyma do is battle yetzahara, especially since on Shmuas, the yetzahara is negated because it says barasi yetzahara, barasi tayra tavlama. The tayra is the antidote. Varaisa the iskere cheru ish takachas. And we know that the tayra is considered cheris. It says that it was chorus ala luchas. It was etched on the luchas. Al tikre chorus ala cheris. Ain ben chayrin alamisha isik b'tayra. Somebody who's free, if he learns tayra. Rav Irving Bunim says a beautiful marshal. He says it sounds strange that a person is free when he has tayra. Tayra contains three six hundred and thirteen restrictions. How could he be free? So he says such a beautiful idea. He says if you have a violin and the strings are not tied, will it make any melody? Of course not. You have to tie the strings in order to make the melody. It's only when we're bound by the Torah that we make the beautiful music of life. And that's the idea, Ein ben chayrin alamisha isa So since we're freed from the Yetzirah, why should the carbon be chametz? Chametz represents the Yetzirah. Ella says the Zaya, the Zaya gives us a parable. Ela Lamalka Dahavale Bar Yechidoi Vicholish. This could be compared to a king who has a only son who's weak. Yuma Chadavitoi Vlamechel, he desired to eat. Amru Yechel Bre Damalka Asfosada. The, the, the child has to have this healthy diet. The Adi Yechele, until he stays on this diet, Lo Yishtakach Mechlo Mezoina Achro Bebeset. There shouldn't be any food or other sustenance in the house. Of Duhachi, when he took the full regimen of the diet, came and Achalahu Asfasa. Once he had this remedy, so then the doctor said, okay, now he could eat regular. He could eat whatever he wants. And won't hurt him anymore. When we left Egypt, we didn't have the Torah yet. We didn't know the root and the secrets of the Torah. They could only eat the healthy food, the matzah. And while they're eating this food, they can't have the comments. They can't deal with the Sahara. They ate the matzah. So now their body was able to be able to absorb the Torah. From now on, they could see comments. They could eat it. Because now they have the Torah to deal with it. It can't damage them. Especially on the Shmuz day. is They have the Nama uh, Ilah, the upper bread. You know, the Torah is the Lechem of the soul. That's the cure of everything. 
And therefore we bring the chametz to burn it on the Mizbech. Now of course we don't burn the the Shtei Alechem on the Mizbech. But when we burn the accompanying carbon, so that's considered like we're burning it on the Mizbech. And we bring two loaves, like one, the chametz he took the benura the madbacha, and therefore the chametz, meaning it's accompanying kisvei atzeres, is burnt on the fire of the mizbech. The lo yochel is shall tol and askalon liyisrael, and now it can't damage klal yisrael. Ubin gine kach, and therefore yisrael kadishin, klal yisrael is holy. It's the vaku be bekut shabrichu cleaving to Hashem. With the health of the Torah on this day. So it's a very good um, uh, understanding that the reason why the carbon of Shavuos is Chavetz, because on Shavuos we could deal with the Chavetz. Until we have the Torah, we can't deal with the Yetzirah. Like we said, Barasi Yetzirah, Hashem said, I created the Yetzirah. So don't let anybody else tell you how to deal with it. Barasi Torah Tavimah. It's only the Torah that it's, ant- it's its antidote. Now again, the Musr warns us about the danger of sadness, about the danger of being depressed, about the danger of melancholiness. Ksiv tachas ha'shelevata ha'shem alikecha b'simcha b'tayv leva. It says that the Curses came because you didn't serve Hashem with joy and a good heart. Ki ha'avoyde im hubi yitzavon, service of Hashem with sadness. Doive le'eved ha'oyved l'rabba is similar to a evid that's serving his master. Beponim ha'tzevus with a sad v'zoyafus and angry look. Uksiv, it says in Mishle, birchas Hashem yita Hashem. The blessings of Hashem will enrich you, but lo yosef etzevima. But it will not add if this sadness accompanied with it. Ki itzav. Where does sadness come from? Sadness comes from the foulness that was injected into us after the sin of the etzadas. Ki itzav in hunimshach. It flows mizuama samoel. From the foulness of the Samuel, the Yetzahara, the Nochesh, and the snake, Shetilu Ba'adam Vachava, that injected it when Adam and Chava did the original sin. Because in both the curse of Adam and the curse of Chava is mentioned sadness. He will eat with sadness. Uksiv be'etzev tell the bottom, she'll give birth with sadness. Val yedei ekein ha'kodesh baruch hu shtinte mistalkin me'olav. If a person allows himself to be sad, the shchina that helps him departs from him. Val roya me'yakov. Neraya is from Yaakov b'chir sheba'ovus, the chosen, the choice of the patriarchs. She nistalkin me'mena shchina v'ruach ha'kodesh, that they departed from him, the shchina, and the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, Shneim Ve'esim Shon, 22 years, Shapirish Yosef Mimeno. When he was sad because Yosef wasn't there, the Shechina departed from Yaakov. And it was only in Kishisamach B'Surazai, when Serach Bas Asher said, Yosef Chai, Ksiv Atchi Ruach Yaakov Aviyem. He was revived. Sheshor Zolav Ruach HaKadosh. Then the Divine Spirit devolved back upon him. That's how bad Sadness is. We have to fight sadness very strongly. And finally, we learn, Ramam continues in Hilchas Kriyashma, Keshem she'asa likrois keneget soya umeiraglayim, just like you can't say Kriyashma opposite excrement or urine, ad she'yarchuk, until you distance yourself from it. Kach asa likrois keneget o erva, you can't say Kriyashma in front of nakedness, until you turn away. I feel a guy, even if it's a naked guy, a cotton, or a child. You can't say it in front of their nakedness. Even if it's a glass wall, it's not a good separation. 
Shehoyov hu roya since he sees it, even though it's on the other side of a wall, but since he sees it, also likrois, he can't say kriyashma, at sheyaz upon him, until he turns away. Now, the kogu for isha erva, it's not only the genitals. The whole body of a woman is erva if it's a part of her that's usually covered. Lefikach lo yistakel begufa isha. He should look at the body of his wife, uh, uh, of a woman, kishu kaire, vafilu ishtai, even if it's his wife. Vimahoyot megula tefach begufa, if three inches are uncovered from her flesh that are usually covered, lo yikra kenegna. He can't say kriyishma, opposite her. And not only someone else, his own nakedness too. U kishem shu osa kenegna ervas acherim. So also, if he's naked, lo yikra kishu aram, he can't say kriyashma when he's naked, until he covers his nakedness. Now, if he had a belt of cloth or leather or sack on, girded around his thigh and covering his genitals, even though the rest of his body is naked, but he could say Kriyashma. But it can't be if his heel is folded underneath him and is touching his genitals. His heels cannot be folded underneath him and touching his genitals. Now, what about he doesn't have an elastic underwear. He's sleeping with a loose-fitting cloak. And underneath the cloak, he's naked. He puts his hand on the cloak, holding it under his heart. So that separates between his heart and his erva. And then the curry, he could say Krishna. He can't put his hand on his neck because that doesn't separate the heart and the genitals. The heart sees the genitals, even though it's under the cloak. It's like he's doing it without a belt. So according to this Rambam, it would seem to be that if he's naked under a blanket and he wants to, let's say, say Kriyashma, or he wants to say an Asher Yotzer, and he had washed his hands properly, so he could put his hand on the blanket between his heart, even though it's not around fully like a belt, he could put his hand on the blanket, separating his heart from his genitals, and he could say Kriyashma. We want to thank you all very much for making this adventure possible, and have a wonderful day.